Hey, and welcome to another episode of Motors and Meats. Today we are finally, finally, finally tackling the brakes that we've been putting off for way too long now. If you recall a couple, maybe three months ago, I did the first of a two-part series on brake upgrades where we changed out the rotors and the pads. We upgraded the pads to some race spec pads and we had intention for the very next week to change out the lines for some braided stainless steel lines that have a coating on the outside so they don't rub and tear and whatever. Really good upgraded lines and also to upgrade the brake fluid to Motul 600. It's a race spec fluid and it boils at a higher temperature. Well, obviously we didn't do that the very next week and here we are today. And also, while we are working on that, on the smoker there's going to be some wild boar roast. Some random cuts, don't know what they are, it just says roast, but it's from a wild boar, so we're going to treat it like a pulled pork. So, check it out. So these are just some random cut. I don't know what they are. This one sort of looks like a butt. That one actually looks more like a tri-tip, but that would be beef if that was the case. So what we're gonna do is coat them in some olive oil and then put a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic. That's my own mixture. And then we're using some Killer Hogs hot barbecue to make these nice and flavorful. They'll go on the smoke until they're around 165 and then they'll get wrapped up so that they can tenderize and then we'll pull it and eat it. Hopefully, being as small as they are, they'll be ready by the time we finish doing the brake job and we can have these for lunch. The things we're gonna need for this job include PB Blaster. That's going to be to loosen up the nipples for draining out the old brake fluid and to loosen up the nuts that hold on the old brake lines. You need some pliers for whatever, just in case. You hope you don't need vice grips, but have some ready just in case. A set of metric wrenches, and most importantly, an 11 millimeter flare wrench. Do not use a regular 11 millimeter use a flare wrench. You will round off the nuts. Next, you need your trusty blue gloves. This stuff is extremely corrosive, so don't get it on your skin. More importantly, don't get it on the paint of your Porsche. You'll need a rag just to collect anything that drips, because you also don't want to get it on your brake calipers. Mine, the finish is kind of garbage anyway, so it doesn't matter too much, but still. You need a motive power bleeder. You need to make sure that it has the correct end that screws on for European cars. Next, of course, the new lines that we're gonna be replacing it with. New brake fluid, which I think I've got more than enough here. I know this stuff is going to need to be changed again. I have a track day coming up. Uh, so after the track day, I'll probably change it out again. And a bucket to catch the old fluid. Did I just say track day? Yes, I did. I have a track day coming up um, in about three and a half weeks. So I'm super, super excited. Take a look at this tech inspection sheet. I have to have this tech sheet checked off by a third party, someone other than me. And the only thing on there that I can find that I am deficient on is that I haven't changed my brake fluid within the last year's time. And you can see there it says recommended using a high performance brake fluid, that sort of thing. So that's what we've got here. Now we have everything prepped. The smoker is up to temp, so let's go put the meat on the smoker and then get back and actually do this brake job that I've been putting off for way too long. A 
unlike on my last break video where I did the other side of the car first so that I knew what I was doing before I recorded it, I'm not doing that because I just, I feel like you guys need to really feel the anxiety releasing that I have been holding up over doing this job for so long now. Bucket is in place, flare wrench 11 millimeter on here ready to go. And now I don't know if this is gonna need to be held back on this end, maybe with pliers or something. Uh, but let's just see if it'll turn. <clears throat> Doesn't want to turn by itself, so let me get the pliers in here. Maybe I've got a wrench that fits on that. That's probably a better idea. 15 millimeter, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> got it. Yeah. All right. Whew. Okay, first bit of anxiety is behind us already. Let's continue to loosen that up. Ooh, yeah, we got brake fluid leaking out already. I see the old fluid is sort of a blue color. I don't know what color the new fluid is yet, but hopefully it's a different color. I know uh, some people will alternate when they're changing their fluid between blue, green, red, whatever the colors are, so that whenever you're flushing the old fluid, you can see the color change whenever you're, uh, you know, that way you know you've got all the old stuff out. I am so pleased with myself. <laughs> you should not let jobs get in your head like this. You shouldn't let tasks of any kind get in your head that you feel like you should be able to do. If somebody can do it, you can do it. That's, that's how I like to approach things. If somebody else can do this, I can do it. And it's out. It's out. <laughs> and this should just pull straight through and it does. That's cool. Keep in mind how that weird clip thing works. It uh, kind of works like a spring action uh, resistance there. So just keep that in place. So one end is loose. Now, you might be looking at this going, what in the world has Michael got zip tied onto his brake line? And if you saw the first video, which click on the pop out banner and that'll take you to the first video. If you saw the first video, whenever I was changing out the pads, my new race pads did not have a place for the wear indicators to go. So I just zip tied them out of the way so that I wouldn't be getting a warning light because yeah, I think as soon as those touch or make some kind of contact one way or the other, the, uh, the brake wear indicator light on your dash lights up. All right, I had a heck of a time finding a spot to stick this camera and the light and everything so that I can actually get in here to show this to you. But here it is. You see this line right here goes into the caliper, follow it down and around, and right there, that's where your 11 millimeter needs to go. Except it's not 11 millimeter. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Uh, okay, so adding to my anxiety here, I am left at home with the only car being up on jack stands and the brakes already dripping out of this side right here. And it turns out that I needed a 10 millimeter flare wrench to get on the bottom of this. I did not have a 10 millimeter flare wrench. I had a regular 10 millimeter wrench and I wasn't about to try to round that off. So I have a crow's foot and it happens to fit in here nicely and it has those extra sides to grip onto. Here, I'll pull it off and show it to you. Look at that. That should do the trick. Am I nervous? Maybe. Yes, I got it. Holy cow. Okay, crow's foot out. Yeah, so with the regular wrench, once it's broken loose, you don't risk rounding it out unless uh, unless the threads decide to lock up on you again. If the threads lock up, you gotta go back to the line wrench, flare wrench, or in my case, crow's foot. Anyway, so I took off the old line um, and now you can see, let me turn this around. Here's where the new line's gonna go. From there, up and around, down to back to here. So let's get the new line, go and plug this one in. Right, I think this should be pretty straightforward. This end just goes through that hole. This guy just comes in from the back side of this bracket and we screw them together. Both of these ends are exactly the same, so we'll just 
randomly pick it in, stick it through, and so we can feed that in. And again, this one in the back is 11 millimeter and the one on the calipers 10 millimeter. All right, one good thing to point out is that because it has this tensioner uh, clip on here, once you get it down so far, you don't have to hold your 15 millimeter in place anymore while you snug it up. I'm sure once we get to the very end, we'll have to hold it still to, to firmly you know, set that down. Yet we are turning the 15 now, so we'll hold that still while we finish it off there. <laughs> All right, halfway done. Now I think I should do this quickly because that brake fluid is going to start coming through here sooner than later. So where's that other end? Down low. I see it here. I'm going to resume tightening this down with my regular 10 millimeter wrench. And then when we get close, I'll finish off with the crow's foot or at any point where I start to feel like it could possibly be rounding out the nut. Woo! <laughs> I've done one brake line. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it, the, the anxiety was definitely overkill for the situation here. This is definitely a doable job. And I don't know why I let it get in my head so badly. Uh, but really, this is only half of it. So we're going to go ahead, do the other one, see if there's any differences up front. And then the other half of this is flushing out the fluid. And I've never done that either. So I think that's probably the main reason for the anxiety. I've never done lines and I've never done a flush myself before. I've always had somebody else do that. <sighs> but the anxiety, regardless, was not worth it. Don't let something get in your head. finished i can't believe it so all that's left out there is to change the fluid out we'll flush the old stuff out put in the new stuff all in the same process but in the meantime the pork is finished didn't finish quite by lunch and it's not really finished but it is done out on the smoker i put it in here in this pan after it reached 165 degrees internal and in the pan had butter apple cider vinegar apple juice, bacon, just to add some extra juices and flavor to this. So we're not ready to pull this apart just yet because we want it to rest. I'm expecting it to be not quite as tender as a store-bought just because this is very lean, lean, wild of the meat. I'm gonna put this down in here, cover it back up and let it rest while we go finish the brake job. This way it's not soaking in the juices while it's resting and just cover that lightly, loosely. And now we will go finish up the brakes. So this next bit underneath the hood is the other part of my anxiety over this job. Because I've never done a flush of the brakes, I've never done anything like that other than when I was a kid helping my dad and I was the guy who had to pump the pedal with the brake. But that would take absolutely forever doing this. So one other specialty tool that I did not mention at the beginning is trusty old turkey injector. You can use a turkey baster for this, but my grocery store didn't have a turkey baster because Thanksgiving's next week. But they did have an injector, which I took the time to cut the end off of this so that it didn't have like a really sharp point and offset uh, injection points. Since we're just going to be using this to suck the excess fluid out of the master cylinder and then we will top it off with the new stuff and then add fluid to this pump this up to 25 psi and then begin the bleeding i guess we'll find out 
Now I've read quite a bit that says that this screen is extremely difficult to get out and you just have to apply more force to it with some long pliers, long needle nose pliers than what you would think. So I'm going to cram this down in beside the screen here. With a nice grip. And that didn't work. I think I can squeeze a little tighter with these. The steel is thicker, which means it's more difficult to get down the side of there. But let's see if that makes a difference. Yes, it made a difference. Good deal. All right, setting that there. Remember, brake fluid, paint, don't let the two touch. Keep them separated. We've gotten out as much as we can possibly get out of there. So we're moving on to adding RBF. Now I'm told that these won't mix. So the new stuff is a kind of a clear yellow. It looks about the same color as the reservoir itself. Um, and then the stuff that was old is kind of a teal blue, much darker color than this regardless. So I'll fill it right to the max line. And now this screws on. And now we're gonna put two whole quarts into the power bleeder. Power bleeder's full. We're gonna pump this up. Let me get this, I, I'm just freaking out. I've seen people do this from up here, but the thought of this stuff somehow or another spilling out and getting on the paint is freaking me out. So this is gonna go down into the trunk since we have a nice long hose here. So this has fluid in it. This has the cap screwed on. And now just turn that to release and then you just pump it until the gauge says 25. Twenty-four. Okay. All right, well, here goes nothing. We have the pressure bleeder pumped up. Now we just get to turn this and let the stuff come out of it. I have a nice cool hose thing right here. We're going to slip that on after I put my wrench in place. And then we'll, after we do this furthest that one, we'll jump into the inner one because there are two. And then after we do that, we'll move on to the next wheel. Now, fingers crossed, this should all work. We're going to open this valve and this is the same 11 millimeter. So the same 11 millimeter flare wrench works just fine for this. Let's open it up. And here comes the blue stuff. Look at that. Now we just let this go until the blue turns yellow. There's a few air bubbles that just went through. We have to also be watching for that. Hopefully all the air bubbles will be gone by the time the blue goes away and it turns completely yellow. All right, look at that now. Totally yellow, let's go and shut it off. There were no more air bubbles coming out. And the fluid color is all yellow. Now you can see that there's still fluid trapped inside this line here. So whenever we take this off, it's going to want to fling out. We don't want it to fling out. So try to be very careful with that. There we go. I'll just switch over to the other side back here. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. All right, now. Ooh, there's some filthy, gross looking brake fluid coming out of that. Lots of trash in there, goodness. Can you see that? Closing that one off quickly there. I think we took most of the old fluid out from this side and then from here to here, we just took out what was left in the caliper. So one more quick attempt at not slinging brake fluid and then we move on to the next wheel. There we go. So we need to check and make sure that there's still pressure and still fluid in the pump. Yes, looking at it, there's still plenty of fluid and we do need to add a little bit of pressure. All right, they've had a good rest now, and uh, they're actually pretty tough, but I think by the time we get it torn apart and then mixed in with that juice again, 
it'll be good enough. Let's let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and call it. This is not the best meat that I have ever cooked on the channel. It doesn't look bad, and it doesn't taste bad. In fact, the flavor is pretty good. But as lean as those, those cuts of meat were, the stuff is, is pretty dry. So I've got it shredded, I've got it pulled, I've got it mixed back in the juices. And you see that, right? That looks, that looks pretty good, right? Well, three years later, <laughs> dry. Very dry. Good experiment. Very dry. It was a good experiment. I'm gonna put the cover back on this. I'm gonna stick it back in the oven on warm, 170. And I'm just gonna let it sit there. Now I go back and finish the car. And we'll see if it's any better. Starting to feel really comfortable at doing this now. It's not bad at all. So if you track your car a lot, I hear that it's best to go ahead and flush your fluid after every time you track it, or at least a couple of times a year, more than the minimum once a year. So as I mentioned earlier, I do have a track day coming up. It's my second ever track day, second track day this year. And it's December uh, 11th, I think. It's actually two track days. It's a High Performance Drivers Education, HPDE is how you'll see that. So, um, let's break this loose. Mm, there we go. Oh yeah, that old blue stuff coming out. It's an HPDE, High Performance Driver Education. So that means I get to have an instructor in the car with me for two whole days and we'll be back and forth between track time and reviewing what we did time. It's going to be at Barber Motorsports Park, which I've been to several times. I've got a short video, one of the shorts, all the last time I was up there just watching the other cars go around. This time I get to be on the track. I am super excited about that. So be sure and subscribe if you're not subscribed already because I'd love for you to be able to check that out. And I'm very interested to know what your experience with doing these brake lines is. Have you done this before? <clears throat> if you know what you're doing and you look and see that I am not doing it right, please throw something in the comments. Glad to happily know a better way to do something. I haven't seen any air bubbles. I'm actually kind of surprised that there was only one caliper where I saw air bubbles, and that was the rear left. Uh, there were quite a few air bubbles in that one. But I figured that since I was changing these lines out, that I would have had quite a few air bubbles, but that seems to not have been the case. <sighs> well, I managed to make this stretch out to basically be an entire day's job. Uh, I don't think it should have been. Part of it was cooking that really weird pork. <laughs> uh, always fun to try new stuff though, like this. And uh, you know, I'm not disappointed in that uh, the way that pork turned out. It was pretty weird, granted. Uh, but you know, knowing that it was a really lean cut from a wild animal, that was uh, help if I go the right way. That was sort of to be expected, I think. Mm. Here comes the old nasty blue. Yeah, I know it's getting dark out here. You probably can't see this. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up, get the rest of this out, do the other one here, and that'll be all of these. And then I guess we get to go try it out. So pick you up on the test drive. Before the test drive, one other thing that we need to do, yeah, I put up a light because it's stupid dark out here. Time change, what can I say? Anyway, one more thing that we need to do, we've got to disconnect all of this and make sure that this is topped off properly. If it's overfilled, we need to suck some out and we need to put everything back together. Okay, moment of truth. I, there, the pedal feels like something's happening. So uh, let's give it just a little test here. We'll roll backwards. 
it stops, so that's good. If you're waiting to find out if the mystery meat is gonna actually turn out, hang out to the very end. I've got it in the oven, it's on warm, and uh, it's just, yeah, just kinda hanging out in the juices. I've already pulled it apart, so hopefully it'll be suitable for a sandwich by the time we get home. So we're about to get on the highway as soon as the traffic clears. One thing to consider is, are the stainless lines better than the regular rubber lines? I've read that they have the same internals, and I've also read that just the mere fact that you change out your brake lines for anything new, if they're old, 23 years old like mine, uh, then you're going to feel a firmness in the pedal by comparison to what you had. So, I don't know if I can answer on this test drive whether or not the stainless lines are better or how much better they are than the regular rubber lines. But what I can say is they're not any worse and they really don't cost that much more and they look really cool underneath there. <laughs> First opportunity here I have a red light so I'm just gonna bring it down at a normal traffic level. So far I haven't gone careening through a red light so that's good. I'm also going to make sure that there's nobody in front of me for quite a while. <laughs> so regular traffic braking is working just fine. I finally got a break in the traffic. Silly me went out for a test drive just after 5 o'clock. But I'm far enough out of town that for the most part I don't have to worry about traffic. Now there's absolutely nobody behind me for at least a mile. So here's 60 miles an hour and here's a full emergency stop. Good gosh. Well, it definitely stops. <laughs> um, I actually hit into the analogs just a little bit. I felt one of the tires slip and, uh, you know, it kind of pulsates at you to let you know that the anti-lock is working. All right, so let's do uh, 70 this time. I don't know why guys this one really had me on edge super anxious but it's behind us now let's go see if the porks worked out oh let's see well it still looks good let's see if it's any more tender yes maybe mm. maybe if it sits here and soaks <laughs> like this on low temp for another three or four hours, maybe it'll be ready. But you know, I let it smoke just like I would a Boston butt all the way up to 203, 204 degrees internal before I brought it into rest. Sorry, I'm talking with my mouth full because I'm still chewing. <laughs> yeah, it's not very tender, but that's okay. Well, you know, it, it was just a, a trial. But anyway, hey, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.